Have you always wanted to paint white flowers? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how I achieve these white daisies on a white paper background. And if this is something you want to learn, something you want to see how I approach it, let's start. And if you've been hanging around my channel for a while, I'm really, really grateful. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do. The algorithm will really love that and will help me grow my channel. So with that said, let's dive right into the video. Okay, for the supplies today, I will be using my Medan watercolor paper, 100% cotton. It's actually the same company as Bao Hong Academy. Uh, that's the painting there and for the brush today i will just use one single round brush actually uh, i'm using a size 10 but you can use a size 12 8 whatever size you like um, just a, a, your favorite round brush uh, in terms of the reference i will be using a um, daisy a lovely daisy um, sticker image from this book called bunches of botanical and i'm just flipping to look for it now it's white and there we go so um, this is the reference picture and i almost painted it to a t because it was something that i just wanted to practice i wanted to get um, the element of uh, the white flowers here i have questions um, some questions that some of my viewers have asked about copyright are we allowed to copy a painting from uh, from an image or from another painting and as long as you are doing it for practice and if you do publish it let's say you publish it on your Instagram you need to credit the original artist okay and then that's fine as long as you don't sell it um, you don't claim it to be yours and if you do publish it on your blog or on your Instagram just make sure you credit the original artist so I'm always crediting the references that I, I use for my tutorials and if you're interested in this book or any of the supplies I have here, they're all in the description below. Go check it out. I will be using my regular tube paints as usual. Um, and for these white flowers, I believe in the video, I talk about what colors I use to get that white flowers. So without further ado, let's dive right into the painting. Grabbing a round 12 and getting into some yellow paint first. I think I chose a bit of lemon yellow and a bit of cadmium yellow to first put down the middle of those beautiful white daisies. And as you can see, I am just dabbing my brush, making a very imperfect circle there that's slightly tilted upwards. And then straight away going to do the other one at the top. And I would just really quickly went around to do this. I didn't take very long at all. Um, if you follow me in my painting journey, you will know that I do paint quite fast, so feel free to pause or slow down the speed. I grab some burnt umber and make sure it's not too watery and quite intense in pigment, just carefully creating a bit of shadow line under each of the yellow stamens. And now you don't have to do this at this stage. I don't have a method to when I put shadows in, but in this scenario, I just felt like going in there to do the, the shadow. And as you can see, it's bleed, it's bled through a little bit into the yellow and that's totally fine. So I'm grabbing a dryish brush to just wipe up some of that pigment and also to just smoothen that transition between the brown and the yellow. And you know, in this video, you get to see the reference picture on the left, which is those two white daisies. So there is really no sort of like step by step. Some people like to do the stamens first. Some people like to do the petals first, but just go with what feels like the next best thing to do. So I dropped in some darker orange there. And right now I'm showing you how I'm going to mix up the white, which is basically the dirty palette on the bottom right hand side of my palette, which is mainly a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of blue, a bit of purple. So if you need to mix this up on your own, very, very light wash of Payne's grey and purple and a bit of Prussian blue or indigo. So as you can see, I'm just going in to make these petal shapes with my brush and it's sort of a gray. So when we paint white flowers, we're not really painting white because nothing is really white, right? Everything is a little shade of something. And I found that 
a grey, a very light wash of grey like this makes the loveliest sort of white petals. And you know what? You can do this with any light shade of any, any, any pigment you like. Some people like to use pink, blue, but I think grey is um, a very safe bet. So as you can see, I'm just going around the stamen and I am not being too particular about the length or the shape of the, each of the petals and this is just my experiment to um, see how, you know, how, how well I can replicate this little sticker um, daisies. Going in to create the other petal, uh, the, the petals of the other flower here and as you can see sometimes I paint from outside in towards the stamen and sometimes I go from the stamen out to out. There is absolutely no rules, just do what you like to do best. Some people like to turn their, the paper around as well and you can totally do that. I don't do that as much because maybe I guess once I started filming YouTube videos I try to keep the paper <laughs> as um, in the position but you're more than welcome to turn the paper to get yourself in a comfortable position to make these flower petals go around. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Um, just fixing bits of the areas with a wet or semi-wet brush and then taking a moment just to decide what to do next. There is actually one more flower that's on the left hand side and it's actually facing up so you only see sort of the bottom of that flower so what I'm doing is just putting down the petals first and it won't be a very prominent flower so it's just there because it's in the composition and I thought I'll just put it in to practice a bit of upturned flower anyway so I'm mixing a green using olive green there I usually have sap green as my base green but I think I've run out of sap green so I'm grabbing olive green which is uh, Mission Gold or any brand you like and then a little bit of chromium oxide from PwC Shinhan and I am going to pull out some stems so as you can see I'm going, <laughs> going this a few times you don't have to do the stem all at once you know you can just See how you go. If you get more confident to just do it one time, that's fine. And I'm pulling out some of these sharp leaves with a really nice pointy edge. And I'm just controlling that bleed there a little bit. I don't know about you, but putting down leaves is one of my uh, favorite things to do because it feels like a really nice reward when you get to see the contrast of your leaves against the, the flowers that you put down. So I've gone to get a bit of darker green, perylene green, or in my, my brand in PwC Shinhan, it's shadow green. Um, and it's nice to just mix up the hues and values of your green to get a bit of interest. So I'm gonna attempt the bottom of this flower here while the petals are still a bit wet and I know there's always a risk of just too much bleeding, so I just control a bit of that bleed with a bit of wipe. And then uh, just keep going, keep going with the leaves. Just go with your intuition. I apologize for the wobble, really apologize for my, the wobble of my... <laughs> Sometimes I just don't notice that I've hit, accidentally hit the phone clamp, um, but it should stop wobbling. Why is it still wobbling? <laughs> anyway, I think I've got a bit excited here. Just pulling out these uh, little fern-like leaves from the middle stem. And I'm not following the fern you see in the reference where it's got a lot little ferns within a main fern because um, just didn't want to go into that detail. So this is my lazy version of a fern. Just leaves sticking out on either side. And I'm just realizing all the bleeding that's happening from the white petals to the leaves and I've just decided to leave most of it because later on you really won't notice it as much and it kind of adds to the charm of your loose floral painting anyway. 
I'm liking how it's looking right now and I am quite loving how this piece is very simple in terms of colors. You just get the yellow, the white and the green um, and sometimes simple simplicity is the best way to go, isn't it? If you like my um, approach to loose floral, I have a free PDF download that you can grab if you just sign up to my mailing list and I put the link in the description box below. Um, and if you subscribe to my mailing list, I do send out inspiration, links to new videos and any kind of like offers that I might have, you get first dibs. So make sure to join my mailing list um, if you, yeah, if you enjoy the content I create. And as you can tell, I'm just making the bigger leaves here and using sort of the belly of the brush to pull down leaves to a sharp edge. And I have a leaves video that I use with a flat brush that I will link up here in the description. Sorry, in the corner of this video. If you can, you might want to check it out after this one. Um, but I just want to show that, you know, whether you use a round brush or a flat brush, that is my one of my favorite brushes right now, you still can create this awesome, beautiful, very natural looking, loose, bleedy leaves by, you know, not being afraid to just be imperfect and be loose and uh, dropping in colors whenever you feel like it might make sense. So I'm, I'm creating a darker green now and um, I just want to emphasize the leaves a little bit more with some darkness and leaving some white space in the leaves as you can see to show that it's some highlights there. I'm creating like another fatter fern like leaf on the bottom left hand and um, yeah let your brush just dance around the page to add in strokes add in uh, leaves whenever you feel like you it needs some something and that really is the joy of painting isn't it Okay, I grabbed some uh, dragon's blood there because I wanted to make like a little berry stem of berries. I'm not sure what they are, but using a bit of the reference. And it's so nice to learn composition of a bouquet. And one of the tips of a bouquet um, Composition is to really include a variety of flowers. So you have three big daisies there and then it's accompanied by these really beautiful little filler leaves and filler berries. I apologize for the shaking. <laughs> Again, it's not an earthquake, don't worry. It's just me being extremely uh, loose and just going for it, right? Yeah, and I think that Little Dragon's Blood, which is also called Brown Matter, um, it looks a bit black now on the screen, but it is a bit reddish. It, it, it gives a, it a really nice neutral tone. And I think we're going to just wait for the paint to dry, and then we will come back for a very quick detailed layer. See you soon. And we are back. The first layer is dry and I'm really, really happy with it, but I think it needs a bit more detail. So I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm mixing up some dioxazine purple with Payne's Grey. You can use black if you don't have Payne's Grey and a bit of burnt umber. So this is going to be my shadow color. It's really that gray mix that I did in the first layer, but with more intensity, more concentrated. All right, so looking at my reference and they ha it, the reference really shows very clear shadowy lines and it's not that complicated so yeah i encourage you to just go in there with your brush and just make these lines that you feel intuitively will uh, represent shadows in your flower 
So these shadow lines can be down the middle, it can be alongside a petal, it can be underneath the petal. Um, and I think as you, you know, progress in your practice and skill, this will come to you a little bit easier and you will sort of intuitively feel you know where you want to put your, your leaves, I mean your shadows. But in my short experience, um, you don't have to overthink it. You just got to make sure it doesn't look cartoony and you don't make it too even. So um, make it as random as you can and try to make it unevenly spread out. Um, some artists like to shade more on one side of the flower than the other to depict the sunlight coming through but you know it's not necessary I'm looking at my reference and it's just kind of random all right so this flower here the one that's upturned is actually got more shadows than the others because it's you know you're seeing the underside of this flower so I'm just making an effort to make a little make it a little bit more um, darker Yeah, and I think I'm quite happy with that. I don't want it to be too dark. I just want to have to give it some effect of shadows. So I'm getting some burnt umber and creating some shadowy lines, shadowy marks in the middle of the stamen, as seen in my reference photo. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm mixing a green because noticing that the flower above has a green center. I don't know why the one below doesn't, the one above does. Maybe it's a like, different stage of bloom or something. But um, I'm just following. And yeah, also trying to spread that burnt umber, orangey kind of darker brown around. The other parts of the statement so it just looks you know more natural and more realistic I'm using my big brush you can choose to use your small brush if you like but if you have a big brush with a pointy a real nice point uh, you can get away with just using one brush and um, yeah I don't like changing brushes too much so what I did there was I just spread out that brownish bit because I found it was too harsh and then I'm just going to gently clean up the middle and that's it. That's the painting. And there we have it, the beautiful white daisies. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe if you painted along, you can tag me on Instagram. I'm at Crystal Tan Art. I would love to see your version. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.